welcome to our Step Up Missouri Instructional Leadership Network. Um, this morning, we have a really great guest speaker. We have Lashana Williams Samuel from Missouri's Department of Social Services here to tell us about two wonderful programs that um, schools and districts could implement. So uh, if you're listening here live or if you're listening to the recording, we're happy you're here. And I'm gonna go ahead and let Shauna or Lashana to kind of take over and um, tell us more about these wonderful programs. So um, nice to see you this morning, Lashana. Nice seeing you as well, Allie, and anyone else who is joining us. My name is Lashana Williams Samuel, and I am one of the grant program coordinators for the Charting the Course Future Leaders and Parenthood Can Wait program. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And my role with the programs is to ensure that the programs run smoothly from start to finish. So whenever we are in the planning stages for getting in or implementing our programs into one of a, into one of uh, the schools or wherever we may be implementing the program all the way through graduation. So the name of our programs are or of the grant that we applied for is called Charting a Course for Economic Mobility and Responsible Parenting. Here in Missouri, uh, we call it the path to their success, right? Our grants, those, our grants teach about pre-parenthood education from a personal development perspective. So personal development is based on uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. That is the foundation of our curriculum. Uh, there is no sex education in our uh, programs whatsoever. We leave that to the schools. Uh, we provide untapped resources. So such things like TikTok videos and YouTube shorts are infused into our curriculum because after all, that is what young adults and students are watching and consuming. Uh, nowadays. And that also falls, falls in that non-traditional uh, teaching method because nine times out of 10, they're not going to see those types of things in their day-to-day -day curriculum. We also have on our Parenthood Can Wait side a mentoring program. So once they've, com they've completed or finished uh, our, our curriculum in the classroom, uh, in person in the classroom, then we do offer a mentoring component and all of our partners are uh, community organizations. So not only have they formed a bond uh, with them in their classroom, in-person classroom through the curriculum, but once they uh, get out into the world and if they need any of those resources that they've talked so much about in the classroom, they can connect with them uh, outside of the classroom as well. And our program also is about planning for the long term. So we'll guide you through getting into adulthood and hopefully into a responsible, successful adulthood. But what does it look like after uh, we have finished school? We're out of the guise of our parents, our guardians, and we are actually living on our own. What will that look like? So back in August of 2020, we were awarded two grants one for future leaders, one for parenthood can wait. Uh, and we were one of eight states or seven states, I'm sorry, that were awarded two, two of the projects. So both, uh, both cohorts are three years long. We are in the process of applying to extend our program uh, to go beyond those three years so we can continue to impact uh, students in classrooms. And we hope to, through our programs, is to uh, hope that we hope that they postpone uh, parenthood until after they have completed their education, started a career, and enter into a committed relationship. Uh, the Office of Child Support Enforcement uh, is a very integral part of these programs, as we do meet with them once a month to provide progress and status on the programs that we implement each, each week in uh, schools across the state of Missouri. So we engage young adults through in-person curriculum, normally through their regularly scheduled school day. 
So whether that's through a homeroom class or a health class or through a time when they have an open spot for us, schools decide what's the best time for the students to receive this information and we provide it to them. Uh, we are very student focused, student driven. We allow students to offer up and share their life experiences with us because we found that through nothing else, they want to be heard, right? So we did have a focus group that we had in Jefferson City through the Boys and Girls Club. And they reviewed some of our modules, gave us feedback and told us what went well and what we could uh, consider adding. We took that, that feedback back to our evaluators and curriculum developers and they made the necessary adjustments. Uh, it was ever so important for us to go ahead and make sure that we have that student-centered approach whenever we were developing the program so that uh, we could impact them at their level where they were. So our approach through, we have two programs, like I mentioned earlier, Future Leaders and Parenthood Can Wait. Future Leaders is designed for middle school students, primarily sixth through eighth grade. Uh, we have uh, done some that are actually heading into ninth grade as well, so into that first, uh, first year, freshman year of high school. And the goal was and is still is to reach 2,500 students. We're uh, probably right at 1,700 for future leaders. Uh, we are in traditional school settings. So any middle school or junior high school across Missouri is where uh, it's about 12 schools. We've covered about 12 different schools so far. Uh, this, this school year, last school year, we had about 14 different schools. Uh, and we do not necessarily use teachers uh, for our facilitators. We use individuals who have a passion to reach young people and a passion to help them help them successfully get on their way to adulthood. And we also have our junior achievement curriculum. Junior achievement provides curriculum for students K through 12, and they are working on materials to go beyond uh, K through 12 as well. And for future leaders, we focus on the economics to success program. And our parenthood can wait program that is primarily for high schools, alternative schools, uh, individuals that are in division of services, that ninth to 12th grade range. So far, we've reached about 800 students for our Parenthood Can Wait program. And as I mentioned earlier on, our Parenthood Can Wait program does have that mentoring component that we do offer at the curriculum's end. Uh, the curriculum is designed for students as well as non-student parents. So individuals who may be young adults who are parents. So they may be students, they may not be students, but we, we provide and have curriculum for them as well. And our focus, our financial curriculum for them is Personal Finance 2.0. And I'll get into how our curriculum is set up uh, here in the next couple of slides. So that, that financial curriculum will make a little bit more sense here in a minute. So then we have our partnerships. Our partners are the foundation of our success and our work. We have partners all across the state of Missouri who hire our facilitators. We train them and uh, they implement the curriculum, they report back to us during weekly meetings, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And uh, we take that back to our evaluators and funders and see how we can make this thing, how we can make this thing better. Some of our partners are listed here. The University of Missouri is our evaluator. Uh, Missouri Valley College does our sustainability plan. Uh, United Healthcare, they are a valuable asset to us as well. And then the Family and Community Trust, as well as Junior Achievement being our financial curriculum provider, Learfield Communications has done all of our marketing and branding. So from brochures to our colors, to our logo design, et cetera. 
community partnerships with Southeast Missouri, Powerhouse, and Connections to Success are all the boots on the ground, uh, actually providing the facilitators and making connections to schools so we can uh, get the work done um, week to week. And Dr. Victor Wilburn, I don't want to forget Dr. Wilburn, he was our curriculum, he and is our curriculum developer. So we have a different way of communicating, like I mentioned earlier, uh, through TikTok, TikTok videos, YouTube shorts, et cetera. We've taken the approach of, okay, let's infuse our curriculum with where they are right now. So uh, the social interactive portion of that is that, you know, they may come across uh, a, a, a TikTok video or a, a YouTube short that features students that look just like them talking about our curriculum. So uh, these are just some pictures from our graduations that we've had. Uh, this one is from Southeast Missouri, Fairview. And these are facilitators. Here's actually Center in Kansas City. And our facilitators are pictured uh, there with them as well. And they're holding up their certificates uh, from their graduations, which we have the very last week as well as their student planners. So student planners, we provide each student with a student planner. And it's not just your average calendar and things that you, know, you can jot down, but it provides information from our curriculum that they receive every week. So program quotes, any maybe activities that we've done. So we've incorporated like the promise to your self-contract in there so they can take that with them wherever they go. Uh, if they have any goals, they have written them down in their student planners. They have plenty of activity pages for when they just need that brain break or that mental uh, relax. So we have a couple coloring pages in there that they can, uh, that they can complete crosswords and such. So the student planners almost serve as the workbook for the program as they uh, complete the curriculum. We also have facilitator guides. Our facilitator guides give the facilitators that are implementing the curriculum in the classrooms a step-by-step -step guide on how to complete the curriculum in the, allot the time allotment. So it gives presentation instructions for when they come across a quote slide or when they come across a discussion slide or when they come across a video and some talking points and discussion points to guide them to have that dialogue back and forth with students. We also publish a monthly newsletter. Uh, we have uh, uh, 14 editions of our newsletter and each of our newsletter covers one of our topics that we have done in the classroom. So goals is one of our topics leadership, health, uh, financial responsibility. So our uh, newsletters give not only a glimpse, give people a glimpse into what we're uh, discussing with students, but also give them an idea of what they can share with their students in their classrooms if they don't yet have our curriculum at their, at their school. So uh, we give them, quite a bit of information in our newsletters every month. Uh, it goes out about the, the last day of every month. Uh, so feel free to, to, to subscribe. We have some marketing materials. United Healthcare actually provided us with our water bottles. We have brochures and everyone loves these wristbands, probably one of the most popular things, powerhouse development. Corporation provided us backpacks. We attend a lot of Misha, Missouri uh, High School Athletics Association has their state-sponsored um, high school event. So when you hear, oh, the basketball team at whatever school went to state, that's what they're talking about, Misha. And Misha has graciously uh, had us at their events, the Scholar Bowl, the speech debate and theater, and a lot of these things were handed out at Misha events to get our information only to the students that attend those events, but also any parents 
uh, teachers and uh, administrators that may be there and just the general public who may want to know what we have to offer. We do have a website, it's called pathtomysuccess.com. And through our website, we tell you all of everything you may want to know about our program. We have about 437,000 uh, page views and we've had about 127,000 visitors each month. These are monthly figures. We also have a Twitter, a Facebook, an Instagram and a LinkedIn in which uh, we also have our ads go out on those on those uh, platforms. And so you'll see some statistics uh, real quick on uh, the ads that come out. And if you are in one of those areas, you may see an ad come up on your phone for one of our programs, promoting one of our programs. So our social media campaign. Uh, it commenced in February of 2022. We already have earned more, more than 14 million digital impressions and 109,000 clicks across all social media platforms. Uh, some of our social media platforms that we have, our campaign is on Google, TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, YouTube, and BuzzFeed. Yes, we have BuzzFeed quizzes. Uh, we've created BuzzFeed quizzes for those who decide to click. They click all the way through. They end up at a BuzzFeed quiz, and they can take a BuzzFeed quiz. I know that a lot of people have been enjoying taking little short quizzes through BuzzFeed, and so we wanted to join the fun as well. So as mentioned earlier, University of Missouri is our evaluator. They are the ones who are telling us what's working and what's not. They are gathering all of the student facilitator administrative uh, administrators data and compiling that for us and making conclusions about our program, what's working and what's not. They've also created a mental health toolkit for us that we will be implementing here real soon in the next upcoming semester in fall of 2023. We recognize that mental health, especially now among middle schoolers and high schoolers is a huge uh, unmet resource that is needed. And so through our program, we will uh, address it as well. Missouri Valley College is our sustainability uh, is doing our sustainability project. So yeah, we have this grant for the next couple of years. However, when it's over, what will we, what will it look like for us to sustain it in the future? And we definitely want to do that. Uh, we know that funding is already tight. A lot, a lot of uh, school districts are looking for additional funding and um, hopefully we'll be able to come up with a plan to make it accessible to all uh, schools in Missouri free of charge. So that is the plan to make this, this program free to all, to all Missouri schools and even beyond. So here we have our mid-grant video. It's only a couple minutes and it will play in a bit. Oops. When students bring their can you all hear that? Yeah, we could hear it. Oh. Um. When students bring their real life experiences to the classroom, it changes the experience immensely. Students learn more effectively when they can connect. We all learn more effectively when we can connect to the topics that we are being taught. And so when students bring their real world experiences to the class, 
it helps not only them to connect with the topics that we're discussing, but it also helps the other students in the group connect with it as well. The facilitator's role is probably the most important role. There was a lot of work done and prior during implementation and during the, the periods leading up to uh, when we first went into the schools. And we will always realize early on, though, that no matter how good a program we had developed, uh, the importance to getting it to the students would rely heavily upon the facilitators. Right. My name uh, is Reddy James Palmer Jr. Uh, I'm a facilitator. I teach uh, both future leaders and parenthood can wait for middle school and high school. When I first started, uh, there was a student that just knew, you know, uh, that I asked the question, if you were to have a child today, are you ready? And his answer was, yeah, I've been helping with my uh, little brothers and sisters and my mom all this time. And then when we got to a, to a topic that is called uh, financial responsibilities of parents, and when we got to that, he, once he's seen all the responsibilities that came to it financially and uh, what it takes away from you and your time and energy at his age, uh, he just realized, man, you know, I thought I was ready, but honestly, I'm not ready to give these things up. You know, I, I'm, I'm not ready. And uh, that was a, that was a powerful moment to me. It's very important for the facilitators to be able to bring their life experiences into the classroom, uh, be it the good life experiences or the bad life experiences. Uh, not every experience that uh, the facilitators are going to bring out is going to be, I remember when I was successful. Uh, but if the facilitators can show weaknesses and vulnerabilities, then that opens them up to the students. And that allows the students to maybe see themselves in the facilitators. I think the most memorable topic was the bully section, because allowing them to write down what had been said to them before or prior years really reflected on what their peers are going through. And I think that was the most there's something magical that happens in a collective environment where there are multiple uh, minds grappling with the same or similar kinds of issues. Students that are struggling are struggling because they haven't found the right words to say. They haven't found the right uh, ways to interpret their life experiences. All of what we do, and especially as an educator, uh, and when we look especially at youth development, Maslow's hierarchy of needs is one of the key components. And we have to realize that for, for these young children, for these middle school children that we work with, we've got to make sure that their basic needs are met. We've got to make sure that they are able to not only have their basic needs met, but move on up the hierarchy. And until they're able to have those basic needs met, until they're able to express themselves and feel security in their lives and in their home lives, but also as they look at their future, um, if they're able to get reward from their peers as well as from their teachers and from their parents and from us as facilitators, then their expansion of their knowledge, their understanding, their behavior begins to change. It's not until we can get those basic needs met and we can begin to develop them as individuals and human beings that true learning can occur. And through this program and through our approach to this program, we take the students through that process and facilitate those steps and make sure that those steps are met to allow them to begin to engage in real learning. And we like to think that at some point in time, attain self-actualization so that they are able to see, and again, through the group discussions, they're able to see the different perspectives, topics from different issues, from different perspectives, solutions from different perspectives, and make better well-informed, mature decisions. Now that I've taken this course, I think that it is a great way to teach kids the responsibility of having a family or being an adult with having to pay bills and buy money and other things that they can need in life. We're not trying to teach them everything on a particular topic. We're giving them the key to open up the door, and then you have to walk through the door and take some initiative on your own in order to, to finalize that. You have to do your own research, 
And, and that's the way it is in life as well. Not just what we're teaching them, but what we're trying to teach them is how to be successful in life, how to be self-sufficient. So if somebody gives you a little bit of information, you need to build off of that and, and get everything out of it that you need. But schools, uh, mentors, no one is going to give you everything that you need on anything. That would be a successful outcome for me is to know that that they have, their minds have opened up to the other options, that they're no longer limited to what they thought, that this is the only way to go about things, with it, and to learn, for them to learn, process things, to see them make better decisions, uh, and to see them be more, to, to start setting goals and be more mindful of the importance that, and value that they have a future, and to start working towards that. Alrighty, and so that was uh, our mid-grade video that Learfield Communication developed for us, and uh, that kind of told you some feedback after uh, we implemented our first year in school and how it went from the facil facilitator's uh, standpoint, a student standpoint, and uh, grant administrator's uh, standpoint. Any questions so far? Um, I did have a question, but I, I'm wondering if you're going to get to this. Um, is the, the students talk about the curriculum and like they went through it for a year? Is this a, is there daily lessons, weekly lessons? How often are they engaging in these curriculum? Great question. I, I'm glad you asked that because actually the minimum number of weeks uh, that we typically go into a school of 13. Hey, Lashana. Yes. Lashana. Yes. I don't know if it's me, but I can barely hear you since the audio. Is it, it Allie, can you hear her good? Um, I, she did get a little quieter after the video, but I, I can hear her. So maybe just kind of, I don't want to say yell at us, but <laughs> <laughs> okay. talk really loud, maybe. Okay, hold on. Let me uh, see if I can get it, get it back. Okay, how about now? Is that better? Um, I can hear you, John. Can you hear her? Yeah, I can hear. I can hear her fine. It's just that the recording. I just want to make sure that the recording is is good. But go ahead, Lashana. So, um, our curriculum is a minimum of thirteen weeks. Thirteen weeks uh, covers six seven weeks of personal development curriculum, and then six weeks of junior achievement financial curriculum. So uh, some schools opt for a week zero where you kind of have that introductory week and, you know, our facilitator comes into the classroom, they present uh, who they are, what the curriculum will be about, get to kind of know the students, the expectations and things like that. And then, of course, our very last week is graduation. So it could very, very well be just the, the minimum 13 weeks, but it could extend out an entire school year as we do have at this point about 42 topics that can be covered under personal development. We have done a uh, summer school. Generally, our curriculum is once, once one day per week. And it's uh, created for about a 45 to 50 minute class. However, we have had adaptations of a 25 minute class or uh, up to an hour and a half long class. So depending on whatever the setting is and what you want to uh, give your students and how long you want to give your, how long you want your students to get the information, we can go from 25 up to, you know, an, about an hour and a half. So over a period of 13 weeks or longer, if you choose. Um, one other question I had for you. So it, I, is there any cost to the district that's participating whatsoever? And then also how, how might a school or a district apply um, to participate in your program? So uh, uh, there is no cost to the district. We cover everything. We bring everything with us. 
So facilitators, unless they have a facilitator they want to use, they still don't pay for that person. They would still get paid through our program. And as far as signing up for the program, uh, you can contact either myself or John uh, if a school is interested. So again, my name is Lashana Williams Samuel and John Jenright, our director is on the call as well. And that is his email address. So if you want to contact either one of us to get your school on board, then feel free. That's wonderful. Um, so I, I know earlier in the call, you said you were I mean, I think for the parenthood can wait, these numbers are probably not accurate, but you said you had like 700 participating and you had room for 1200. So, so there will eventually be like kind of maxed out, right? You will eventually hopefully have enough students or will your program continue if you reach that number? How does that work? We don't have, that was the goal. So when okay. I first started that mm -hmm. we were hoping that many students Okay, so cool. You can reach as many students. So you could do more. Correct. Oh, great. Reach okay. As many students as great. As long as our our we have the grant available to us, we will reach as many students as we possibly can. Awesome. And then um do schools or districts that participate, do they need to be like can they be anywhere in Missouri? I know Step Up, um, we have a lot of clients that work in rural communities. Would they be able to participate as well? Yes, ma'am. Actually, most of our schools are from rural communities. Okay. So West Plains, uh, Slater, Marshall, Sykeston, Cape Girardeau is not necessarily considered rural, but we have some school. We have some schools in Cape Girardeau, Charleston. Uh, so yeah, we have schools that have been all over, as well as DYS uh, facilities that are in Kabul and Waverly and different places like that, uh, Kirksville. So yes, they can be located anywhere as long as we can get a facilitator there. We are open to having them. We want this program to reach as many students as possible. That's wonderful. Great. Um, well. Did you have anything else or any other questions from anyone on the call? Um, otherwise, it looks like Lashana and John's contact info are up here for you to reach out should anyone have any further questions or comments. But um, I want to thank you so much for spending time with us this morning telling us about these two programs. And I'm hopeful that we can get some more students involved because it sounds like you guys are doing some really great things. Thank you, Alan. Okay. Great job, Lashana. Great job. <laughs> okay. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.